Okay, so now that my wheels are back together, the next step is to reassemble the front fork. Now, one thing I wanted to do while this is all apart is shorten the front fender. So the plan here is to cut the front fender right about here so it's even with the headlights and then bring it back just a little bit on the back, probably just enough to remove this little tab here. So in this video, uh, we're going to walk through cutting back the front fender. Okay, so we're going to have to do a little fuzzy math here, but what I want to do is basically, this is the front, I want to make this half as long in the front, so, um, you know, I have to kind of work with these curves here, so if as far back as I want to possibly go is here, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little mark here with a black magic marker, but you probably can't see in the pictures or in the video. Okay, so we're gonna go from here to here, and I'm gonna go ahead and measure that. So we're looking at roughly eight inches. So I'm gonna bring this tip. Tip will be back at about four. Okay, so let's go ahead and Make a mark here at four inches. And about there. It's probably easier to see this way. So there's my four. So you can get eight. Get four right there. So this curve is going to be reproduced with the point starting here. So now I need to figure out a way to trace this curve, and I think just create a little cardboard cutout might be the easiest way to do that. Okay, so instead of cardboard, I found this, um, looks like uh, it's just some card stock in my office. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this instead. Um, corrugated cardboard is probably gonna be pretty difficult to work with, so if you are using cardboard, I would suggest trying um, maybe like shoebox cardboard. Okay, so what I'm hoping to do is reproduce this curve up here. Now, there's a slight change in depth, so there might be a little bit of fuzzy drawing up here, but at least having this template, um, I'll have something to match it off of. So, I'm going to try this out. All right, that's pretty good. What I'm thinking I can do is, you can see that line. If you line it up there, right in the center, pretty good match, by the way. Pretty good, pretty even. So, So, my center here, you can see there's a little bit of a difference either side. So, what I'm thinking I'll do is just lean this one on this side a little ways while keeping it lined up with the, with the our mark and scoot this over on this side. This way I get a nice continuous line and it just slightly flattens out in the middle. And I'm gonna give myself, give myself a little bit of room so I can cut it and then kind of trim my way back to making this nice and smooth. Because I have a feeling it's going to be kind of rough and I have a chance to smooth it out. So, let's 
let's do this. Here's my mark. I uh, had to go over it a couple times to make it a little bit more visible. So we're gonna be taking this much off. This is our baseline. This is about halfway. I, I probably went a little bit more towards this side. I'd rather cut long and have room to cut it back than cut too short and then have to go find another fender. And as you can see from the side here, you know, this arch is closely matched here. Um, you know, I might need to do a little trimming once I get this big piece cut off. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut the front and then go back and measure the, the rear part instead of measuring it all at once. Well, here's the front piece. I'd say it looks pretty even to me. It's hard to tell, probably in the video, but I'd say it looks pretty good. For my first attempt at cutting a fender, I'm pretty happy with the results. And now I'm going to move forward with sanding, priming, and painting the fender. The primer I'm using here is the VHT wheel primer. I really wasn't sure what was appropriate to use on a steel fender but it seemed to do the trick pretty well. It also laid on nice and thick. My goal is to have the fender and the shocks match and all three be glossy black. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep the shocks as well while I'm waiting for paint to dry on the fender. And here I am priming the shocks and applying the black paint. This is also black VHT wheel paint that I had left over that I'm applying to both the fender and the shocks. So again, may not be its intended purpose, but put on great coats and uh, stuck really well. So, you know, it's going to be a bit of an experiment to see how it holds up over normal use, but I'm really happy with the results. And here's the final result, a deep glossy black and the fender and both shocks turned out really good. So I'm pretty excited to put them together and see how they look on a wheel. So at this point I've waited 24 hours for the paint and clear to fully cure. However, I'm still being cautious, so I've put down a blanket to keep from scratching or chipping the paint.
Thanks again for watching, and in my next video,